Well, just as September 11th is going to go down in American history as perhaps the most tragic day on American soil, yesterday may also go down as one of the most uplifting. And that may seem hard to believe, but indeed it was an uplifting day when the president and other leaders from around the country went to Washington, D.C. They went to the Washington National Cathedral. This was a situation of an interfaith service. Statesmen poured in from around the country. They wanted to give hope to the families of the victims. Let's take a look now, if we can, at that service in its entirety. Let's listen in on that soaring ceremony. Americans across the country have taken time out to pray. This is a national tragedy. This is more than uh, local tragedies in two American cities. The, the, the nation cries today. The nation's heart bleeds. American flags hang in small towns and big cities and suburbs. Signs of unity of a nation that has been bruised and battered, but is coming together in this, in this time of unbelievable sorrow. More people taken from us, perhaps, than, than Pearl Harbor, the Titanic, and other famous tragedies combined, but we, we, we frankly don't know. continue to watch the, the line of, of dignitaries making their way. I believe, it was, I believe that was Trent Lott. As we continue to watch these images, I'm joined uh, by Monsignor Tom McSweeney and Rabbi Simon Jacobson to talk about this day of remembrance. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Rabbi Jacobson, are you with us? I'm with you. Good morning, I said. Let, let, me, let me ask you about the conflicting feelings that, that this country is going through. We are sad, we are weeping, but there is also this, this anger and all these conflicting emotions. Can you talk about that? Indeed, it's, it's been said, uh, this is Monsignor McSweeney speaking, that anger is love disappointed. You know, we are uh, angry, we are very conflicted. But as we watch what's happening here right now at the National Cathedral, we're focusing on the importance of, of the individual, that each and every human life, your life, my life, is beyond all price. And that is what we draw our strength from, not from the anger. We draw our strength from the truth that God knows each and every one of us by our name. He knows us by our heart. God did not will this evil, but he counts on each one of us as individuals to draw strength from our love from one another, to minister to one another as the important priceless individuals that we are. Rabbi uh, Jacobson, we are a country that, that, that uh, believes we have such a strong moral fiber, a country that we, that we believe stands for justice, and we simply can't rationalize this anger, this hatred that has been aimed toward our country. How do we begin to, to rationalize that? Maybe we shouldn't rationalize it. You know, it's a tribute to our nation that we cannot face such evil uh, in the eye because we are, in a way, naive and have never encountered such evil. You know, people cannot identify with something that they themselves cannot perpetrate. There is no American in this nation that would ever do anything to anyone of this magnitude. So we cannot fathom how others can do that. And we should embrace that inability to fathom it because it's a tribute to our goodness. It's a tribute to what this nation is made of. So I don't think we necessarily have to rationalize or in any way justify this. What we need to do is channel our anger channel our outrage, channel our, our sheer uh, frustration into strengthening what we stand for, empowering ourselves, facing that evil and confronting and battling with it, but most importantly, embracing like never before the greatness and the goodness of what it means to be a human spirit and what this nation stands for. We saw Secretary of State uh, Colin Powell, there's uh, uh, Fed Chairman Alan, Alan Greenspan, uh, among the many dignitaries who have filed into this church. Let me, let me ask both of you gentlemen, uh, we often get the advice when we are struck or hurt or, or in anger, there's the advice to step in a corner, take a deep breath, and, and then make your decisions. Are we a country with bloodlust right now? Or are we ready to strike out? And, and, and is that our frame of mind uh, I'll proper say, at this point? I'll say this, um, um, it reminds me of a prayer that we as Jews are about to say Rosh Hashanah, which is coming this Monday night. It's a prayer that really captures this in the most uncanny way. It says, today the world, tre the world trembles, today the world is born. I think anger at evil is appropriate. 
does not mean we have to succumb or become part of the, of the evil, but we maintain our dignity even though we confront our enemies. And I think it's a necessity not to go into denial, not to hide in a corner, to confront this with the most extreme and most powerful way as we can as people and as a nation. But at the same time, we maintain the dignity because we realize that we are trembling here in the face of God. We have been humbled. And as one of, uh, one of the survivors of a previous terrorist attack once said, that you don't appreciate faith until you have nothing except faith. Monsignor McSweeney, revenge and justice at a time like this, are the two confused? Indeed, but uh, Lester, we have so much guidance from sacred scripture on this very issue. We're told in the Gospel of St. John not to be overcome by evil. You overcome evil by doing good. And as the rabbi said so well, we cannot even begin to imagine the, the, the evil that has been um, foisted upon us as, as an American people. And rather than trying to respond to the darkness with similar darkness and, and, and feelings of hate, to direct that anger to good acts, uh, Indeed, we have the opportunity here now to become a stronger nation. And as hard as it is to, to fathom, we turn to God now in the hope that we can draw upon the best of, of our human spirit and build on that. The last uh, gathering we saw like this at the National Cathedral was uh, for the Washington Post's Catherine Graham's funeral. And before that, the inaugural uh, mass before uh, President Bush's inauguration. But what an extraordinarily sad gathering this is. And who could have imagined that America would have to gather and, and mourn something as devastating as this? Uh, President Jimmy Carter and uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell conversing there. Again, this is, uh, this is not open to the public. Uh, the doors opened a short time ago, and we still expect to see uh, President Clinton, uh, former Vice President Al Gore, and then, of course, President Bush uh, will be arriving uh, shortly. The uh, service itself should last about 55 zero minutes. The Speaker of the House, uh, Dennis Hastert, uh, being led to his seat. NBC's John Palmer is outside the cathedral. John?